It's everywhere. They're running. New York don't walk. They run. It's a fast-paced city. I'm sorry, I'm gonna be very breathy because I just dance. I've been very lazy lately. So, all right. The first destination done. Lena no longer in Vietnam. She's there in Times Square. Um, however, breaking one circle does not mean the circle ends. It means you're stepping into another circle, another loop, another fear. And my next fear is intimidation, unconfidence. Ooh, the dancer in here is so professional. Ooh, they were trained at like three. They can do street tap, ballet, theater, everything. What can you do? I compare myself. I was scared because my parents already paid for the classes. Now I can't undo it. So I closed myself for the first three months. I did not really communicate because I was so unconfident. Yeah? Have you ever felt like that lack of confidence and like you want to open up to someone but you're like, man, they're so good, I can't talk to them. Some of you, yeah? All right, yeah, exactly. But actually, they are thinking the same thing. They're like, they're looking at you like, oh, they're so good, I can't talk to that. So that's the voice inside our head that we are fighting to get over. And I was fighting for the first three months. And I know three months is not a lot, but it's something. And I know that there are so many of you out there go through that for years, especially those who went abroad to study. So in my first three months, I was training. My school only allowed us to train for 18 hours a week in Old South. I forced myself to train for 24, 26 hours, or even 30 which is over a limit allowed in my school. It was, I was so scared of not being able to catch up with those dancers. So um, if BDC found out, I would get kicked out of the school. So I took a lot of classes outside, tap, theater, ballet. I did everything, even those styles that I didn't like. And after three months, of course, I felt more confident. Yeah, I know this. I have the confidence now. I was so scared. So there was this one person in my theater class. His name is Mr. Johnson Bro. A very special human being in my life. I admire him secretly. Um, and then after those months, I picked up myself and I had the courage to go like, hey, you know what? Say hi to this guy, expand yourself. You're in New York, you have to socialize. You have to create network. Um, and on a very cold, piercing cold winter day of New York, I was running into BDC. I saw that beautiful giant over there. He was signing up for class, and I was like, Lynn, let's go, let's go. No, I can't, because I'm scared. And I pushed myself again. Nope, I'm scared again. Boom. Hi, Johnson. I, I don't know why I know your name, but hi, Johnson. That was a very good introduction, Lynn. And we talked. Johnson said hi back, and from that simple, nervous, awkward, hi, things escalate. Opportunities open. Magic, magic, miracles. Doo -doo. From a hello into me helping him play, hit the play button for his tap dance project, <coughs> into me working on with him for our projects in Vietnam. So what is that? Hit it. Copy scenery. Oh, okay. We went to a cafe. <sighs> Me and Johnson were like sipping on a Vietnamese coffee in my favorite district of New York, which is Brooklyn. Yeah. So I was like, you know what, Johnson? I want to do things. I want to bring things to Vietnam. And you know what? I want to drink Vietnamese coffee in Vietnam. And I want to bring jazz to Vietnam. So let's drink Vietnamese coffee and bring jazz to Vietnam. I'm like, what, really? Like how? Not here, I'm here. I'm booking my ticket now. And that's what happened. He booked his ticket. And I'm like, okay, I need to go back to renew my visa, so I'm going. So we went to Vietnam. So from that simple hello to that very 
daily chill coffee talk. We did a workshop series called A Broadway Dance Experience. Three workshops. Over 150 students joined. None of them know how to dance. They have both leg, left feet, like they can't even. <laughs> they joined. One showcase, 300 jazz hands. And that was the first time we brought a Broadway dance experience to Hanoi. So, the question here is, try the simple. Try to do the little. Why not? What? If I, I did not say that hello, that awkward hello, would all those things happen? I ask myself every day. So that was one thing we did together, by simply open ourselves up. And of course, not everything is pink and colorful and pretty and Broadway. We have that blues note in jazz, right? And here comes the blues. Life is full of unexpected variables. It's like a sin wave. And one of those most unexpected variables is COVID-19. Woohoo! Love that. We can you imagine like now we are sitting this close without a mask? And three years ago, this whole theater would get shut down. That what that was what happened. As humans, we need interactions. We need that exchange of energy to survive. I'm not talking about having fun and live, but survive. But now it's all social distancing. And especially for artists and especially for dancers, we need that talk, we need that communication. In the theater, live theater, on stage, in the studio. We lost it all. Can you imagine like New York City, the hub of everything, of Broadway musicals, of all the entertainment? 300 Broadway shows a week. Over one million tourists every week would turn into this block of gray buildings. Empty streets, quiet silence because of COVID-19. No one would imagine that. Artists, we lost our job, but that is not the real tragedy here. The tragedy here lies in the fact that we lost our artistic souls. We only were just breathe, humans, nothing. So I and Johnson, this time it was not a, a cafe. It was me and him sitting in a room with a laptop screen. Hey, uh, this is pretty dead. Like, let's do something. Let's, let's, let's get crazy again. So we got crazy again. But within regulations. Yeah, because we are very, you know, strict people. So Johnson came up with the idea to contact all theaters, community theaters in New York, as much as possible, to ask them about, hey, we want to bring theater back alive, but safely, how can we do that? And there was this very lucky chance we got from the Tank Theater. It's a community theater for all Broadway artists. So they were very supportive of our mission, which is to give life back to these Broadway artists who lost all their jobs and they're now, they just want to dance. So come to our theater, but only a few people can come at once. So we had this idea of creating a virtual show, an online show, which means we record footages of dancers, each one of them, put them in a film, and then pick up a show date to air it online. So three months, one virtual show is, is called Dancing Through. I'm not sure why it's not showing up. Thank you. <laughs> we have over 100 artists, 100 artists during COVID. Half of them were Vietnamese and half of them were in New York. I traveled back to Vietnam to save myself. And I was like, Johnson, hey, I'm gonna take, be in charge of these dancers here. Lynn, hey, I'm gonna be in charge of these dancers here. Send me this tomorrow. All right, tons of emails, sign contracts all of that through online. And we made that happen because why? We try. trap. We do not give up because COVID block our way. We find ways to fix the problem, to get it through, to get it done, because we try. And because we try, these artists want to try. Everyone wants to try and we made it happen during COVID. 
So that's another one. After Broadway dance experience in Hanoi, we made dancing through, bridging West and the East together. All right, so done with COVID. That's pretty sad, right? Okay, let's, let's move on. Um, okay. The, the funny thing is, I think like COVID likes me. Like they love me. I was in New York, it's COVID. When I go back to Vietnam, it's COVID. So I have like literally no time to break. I'm like, okay, yeah, best friend, go, let's go, let's be best friends. So when COVID hit Vietnam, yes, we all know that. Sad. Um, I teach mostly when I came back here, and most of, you know, everyone's class got canceled. So all the artists, everyone changed their platform to online. I am a very headstrong person. I have this big ego that I hate so much, and I'm trying to fix it, trust me. And I was like, no, dancing needs human energy. I want my dancers here. I want my students here with me. I'm not doing online classes. But then also I'm a very realistic person. So I'm like, you know what? Reality hit me in the face and okay, fine. I'm doing my online stuff. So I started with live streaming on my Facebook. Just like, hey guys, so yeah, this is my jazz class. Two viewers. And they were like, <laughs> My two best friends, y'all here. You know who you are. And I bet they just like switch on their laptop and leave it there and be like, oh my God, this crazy person, and oh, they do their own job. But thank you for your support. That means a lot. Because from those two people, I keep my ground. I'm like, you know what? Because I chose life, I'm gonna do it until the end. So I keep that very consistent. Every week I live stream. Yeah, sit up everybody, let's go. From two. It goes up to five, 10, 15. It dropped down to eight, dropped down to five. I was like, no, no, no. This is gonna rise up again. Trust, keep consistent, keep consistent. It rise up again. It went up to hundreds and more and more. And from that, people start to reach out to me. Hey Lynn, I want online class. Hey Lynn, let's open this, blah, blah, blah. And I opened my first online class. And all of these groups of people just keep building online. And once the COVID rules, the COVID social distancing rule was lifted. Can you imagine all of these people? They came to me and, hey, let's do this offline. And that's how Theater Dance Vietnam community was built. From this laptop. Those people over there, you guys are my soul. And thank you so much for being here today. Even, even though Theater Dance Vietnam community, my student community, only have roughly 30 people. That is nothing to compare to other dance communities. But you know what is meaningful to me? Because these people, these 30 people, did not leave me one day even when I was at my lowest point. They were the one who picked my head up and say, Lynn, keep going, we are here for you, we're rooting for you, and they are here today. So that's what keeps me going. And of course, Broadway seems very fun. But again, let's go back to the sin wave, right? Up and down, up and down. Here comes to more down. When TDB went offline, we have classes, right? I was so, I was pretty confident. It's like, you know what, I can hold this myself. Not because I don't really trust teammates, not, not like that, it's just that, I was afraid to reach out for help. I was like, you know, I don't want to bother this person. She probably has something to do. So I just, I was a one woman show. So here comes a one woman show. Not every trial is a success, but a lesson. Um, I was a dance teacher, a choreographer, a dance team manager, at the same time, I was a page admin, sale person, customer service, in charge of that, sales person, did I say that already? And a, an accountant. So basically, every little, little things I was doing, I create content, I, I just do all of those non-dancing stuff, a lot, a lot, a lot, for like four classes, which means I have eight to 10 sessions a week being in charge of everybody. At first, I was like, you know what, this is simple. I can still dance, I can still work on my laptop like that, but 
yeah, that lasts for one year, and then Linan was, it was just like that big. It hit. My physical health, my mental health were in complete shutdown. I was so confident, and I was like, you know what? This is probably just, just temporary. I can go through. Until the day I couldn't hear. It's for sudden hearing loss. My right ear was 90% deaf. So I entered the hospital for 10 days. I was still confident when I was deaf. I was like, yeah, doc, give me quick. I have jobs to do. I have IV flutes through my right arms veins, and I have this phone next to me like, yeah, you know what, um, yeah, our class is still running, it's on Wednesday night and Sunday morning. I was talking to my customers as I have my IV flutes in me. Yeah, I was a, a bit of a workaholic, and I couldn't stop. I did not realize that that was very toxic. So after that, 10 days done, went back home, went back to my journey to be a one-woman show. I shut down. Honestly, I was so stupid. So stupid. Ah, and day after day, I started to to feel less. I listened to jazz. I couldn't feel anything. Normally, when I listen to jazz, I'd be like, yeah, groove. I didn't. I didn't feel. Good. I watched my favorite musical. I watched like Sing in the Rain, Chicago, all those classic. I'm like, what are these? I don't like it. I don't want it. Get it away from me. Why did I become like that? I, I, that's my soul, that's my whole heart. Five years I've been working on this. I've been loving it. Why do I feel this way? And day after day of feeling lost and having no motivation, no interest, hating my own interest, I started to see physical reaction. And this is real physical reaction. I hated the sunlight when it hits my bed. I had to drag myself out of bed to go to the bathroom and brush my teeth every day for consecutively six months. And actually more than that, but let's just make it six, okay? And I shook like this every morning for four months straight. Four months. And I hated Broadway. I hated it. I, I said to myself, why did I make myself become like that? Why did I let Broadway make me choke? And I couldn't breathe. I even told one of my best friends, like, hey, can you come here or can I come to your house and you help me control my shaking because I could not stop. I cannot work. I canceled everything. And that is my next chapter. Try to live simple. Do not belittle the little. So from that day on, obviously, I went to the doc. I took my medication on time. So trying to do the simple here means eat right, drink right, sleep on time, take medication on time. Note down on your diary. Track your process. Um, at first, I was like, yo, this is doing nothing. I want to work. Give me money. Give me cash. People, come on. Classes, shows, events, where are y'all? I want to work. But my hands were still shaking. How are you working, Lynn? Wake the hell up. So, my best friend over there, Lynn, read, breathe, eat, sleep, that's it. That's your daily task today. Don't do anything else. And yes, he's the only one that I listened to that day. I mean, that time. So I did, for months. And also, obviously, trying to do nothing does not mean nothing. We can still work, but we do the work very minimal to keep our brain alive or just to keep our interest. So I did work after a few months of healing. I started to take class again. I started to say yes to like TBC, choreographing for shows, but with help from my friend, with help from my colleague, I'm not doing that alone anymore. And things get better. Things got better. And now it comes to another process, which is called 
Try to trust again. Trust who? Trust this. Yeah, because what? This Linan left me. I need to trust the old Linan first for her to come back. So this? Okay, for now. I believe I lost her. Boom. No hat, no Broadway, just me. There was a hole inside of me. Learning to trust. <laughs> Learning to trust that that person that left me is going to come back is not easy. But I did. So, um, I started with just push myself to communicate. Okay, I wasn't scared of the sunlight anymore, so I opened a little bit of my window every morning. I started to say, hey, you know what, I think I'm ready to meet my students. But just meet first. So my students were like, yes, let us meet, just meet. You don't have to teach. I met, I met my friends, I communicated. I started to work with my friends again, but mostly they work, I didn't work that much. And things start to light up again. My heart starts to feel things. I started to listen to some jazz and watch some musicals. I, I did not feel much, but I, I did enjoy some of it. And um, one class to two classes, I was ready to have more interaction with people. And, and that just somehow nurture again. It lives again. So yeah, I think the Broadway and the Nat is coming back. But not all of it, just slowly. So I decided after 11 months of being in depression, I'm okay to step out into the light and be myself again and pick myself again. So I tried to trust the original Linan that, hey, she will come back. And suddenly, one day, opportunities, opportunities just keep flourishing and flourishing. Works. All the school contacted me. Dance Center contacted me. VTV were like, hey, Lynn, do you want to do this show? Hey, Lynn, do you want to be in this interviews? And now I'm here in TEDx, VN, UIS, and giving you this speech. How would the depressed Lynn and up like 10 months before would imagine this day would come, you know, being here? And you can't imagine how grateful I am standing on this stage and being able to speak out this word to you. So yes. And after those 11 months, I, I was fine. I felt healthy. I'm okay to work now. Thank you, everybody, to support me. And um, one of the favorite projects that I did is called I Do, a project I did for uh, um, a single called The Book. And uh, this legendary band, 911, who I listened to when I was a kid. And at first, my, my thought when I joined that project was, you know, Hey, I just want something to do, like chill, to get me back on track. But then, because I tried to trust the director who contacted me like three days before then, I, tr I trusted him that he's gonna make my thin really beautiful. I trusted him. And I trusted in myself that, yes, you will do this. You will make this wedding song super jazzy. You bring jazz back into the Vietnam in entertainment industry again. So I said, yes. And now watch how many views that video got. You can do that yourself. And that was the final key. The real gift that I got from that project was not that quick cash or like making money. No, no way. It's the people I met. Oh my goodness. You can't imagine how many inspiring people were there. We were a team. We gave ideas. We respected each other's ideas. We boost each other up. 12 to 15 hours a day of being on set. That is crazy tired. But we did not feel a thing. We give each other energy. And that is the biggest gift I received. And also, a, just a cute side story. Um, during that day, I met a special someone, a jazzy soul. Being in a project is very, which is like, has nothing to do with jazz music. It's pop. 
and I was noting, as I was noting down on my diary on set, and the person came in and he's like, hey, are you Lynette? I knew you for two years, let's talk. That person is a very jazzy soul, a jazzy musician, I'm a jazz dancer. And that was my final key to everything. I found my light. Thank you. 